Have you ever pondered about the end times, about the conclusion of our existence on this planet? The notion of the end times, the final curtain call, if you will, has been a source of fascination and intrigue for humanity since the dawn of time. A fascination that transcends cultures and geographical boundaries. A shared curiosity about the ultimate fate of our world. From the sun-drenched sands of ancient Egypt to the snow-capped peaks of the Himalayas, from the modern metropolises of the West to the timeless villages of the East, every culture, every religion has its own prophecies, its own narratives regarding the end of the world. These predictions, these visions of the future, are they mere figments of our collective imagination or echoes of an impending reality? Today we delve into the signs of the end times as prophesied by various religious texts. Brace yourselves, for we are about to embark on a journey into the unknown, a journey that probes the inevitable. The signs of the end times are not random, but rather follow a certain order. This is a fascinating concept, isn't it? Various religious texts, from the Bible to the Quran and many others, suggest a sequence of events that will unfold as we approach the end of days. Let's delve into this chronology. The initial signs are often subtle, creeping into our societies almost unnoticed. We're talking about moral decay here. It's the gradual erosion of values and principles, a society losing its moral compass. We see it in the rise of dishonesty, corruption, and a disregard for the sanctity of life. It's a shift, subtle yet profound, from a world where virtues are cherished to one where they are dismissed or even ridiculed. Next in line is widespread violence. Religious texts warn us of a time when peace will become a rarity and conflict will be the order of the day. It's not just about wars between nations, but also violence within our communities, homes, and even our hearts. It's a world where the value of life diminishes and the sanctity of peace is forgotten. Alongside these societal shifts, we see the onset of natural disasters. They grow in frequency and intensity, almost as if the earth itself is protesting against the moral and societal decay. Earthquakes, floods, wildfires, and storms of unprecedented magnitude serve as a stark reminder of our planet's distress. Now, these signs are not meant to instill fear, but rather to serve as a wake-up call, a reminder for us to reflect, reassess, and where necessary, make changes. They are a call to return to our moral compass, to value peace over conflict, and to respect our planet. Remember, these are just the initial signs. As we journey further down this timeline, the signs become more severe, more intense, they're reminders of an approaching culmination, a finale of sorts. These are just the initial signs, but as we move closer to the end, the signs become more severe. As we approach the end, the signs start to intensify. The signs we've been discussing, they're not static, they're not stagnant, they're dynamic. They grow in intensity and frequency as we move closer to the end times. Let's take natural disasters, for instance. Earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, wildfires, they're not just happening more often, they're happening with greater ferocity. This isn't merely a case of better news coverage or improved detection technology. Something deeper is at play here. Then there's the rise of false prophets. Individuals who claim to have divine insight, who profess to be the conduits of God's will, yet their teachings and actions contradict the fundamental principles of love, peace, and justice. They are wolves in sheep's clothing leading astray those who are searching for spiritual guidance. This proliferation of deception is another sign that the end times are drawing closer. But perhaps the most distressing sign of all is the widespread persecution of the righteous. Those who stand for truth, justice, and love are finding themselves increasingly marginalized, ridiculed, and even violently opposed. It's a chilling reminder of the prophesied days when right will be called wrong and wrong will be called right. These signs, they're not just bullet points on a list. They're not abstract concepts or distant predictions. They're happening right here, right now. They're unfolding before our very eyes. They're not meant to scare us or fill us with despair. Instead, they're meant to wake us up, to stir us into action, to compel us to strive for righteousness and justice, and to prepare ourselves for what's to come. We're not discussing fairy tales or myths here. We're discussing reality, a reality that's becoming more and more evident with each passing day, 
a reality that's both distressing and hopeful. Distressing because of the trials and tribulations it entails, but hopeful because it points to the fulfillment of ancient prophecies and the dawn of a new era. The severity of these signs is believed to be a clear indication that the end is near. In the final stages, the signs become unmistakably clear. In these concluding phases of the prophesied days, the signs are no longer whispers in the wind, but thunderous roars that echo across the world. They become the undeniable heralds of what is yet to come. One of the most significant final signs is the return of the Messiah. The Messiah's return is anticipated across many faiths, each holding its unique interpretation. For some, it marks the beginning of a new era, a period of peace and harmony. For others, it is the final call to righteousness, a divine intervention to steer humanity back onto the path of truth and justice. The return of the Messiah is not a quiet affair. It is accompanied by cosmic disturbances that shake the heavens and the earth. Stars lose their shine, the moon darkens, and the sun refuses to give its light. Nature itself seems to hold its breath, acknowledging the gravity of the moment. Closely following the return of the Messiah is the final battle between good and evil. This battle, often referred to as Armageddon, is the ultimate showdown between light and darkness, truth and falsehood. It is a war where every soul must choose a side, and neutrality is not an option. This battle is not just physical, but spiritual too, waged in hearts and minds as much as on the battlefield. And then comes the final judgment. This is the day when each individual will be held accountable for their deeds. It is a day of reckoning where justice will be served, and each soul will receive its due. The final judgment is not a moment of despair, but a moment of truth. It is the time when the scales of justice are balanced and every act whether good or evil, is acknowledged and rewarded accordingly. These final signs mark the culmination of the end times. They are the closing chapters of an age-old story, the final notes of a symphony that has been playing since the dawn of creation. They are the signs that tell us that the end of one era is indeed the beginning of another. So, are we living in the prophesied days? This question has been the cornerstone of our discussion. And it's one that has been echoed throughout history. We've traversed together through the labyrinth of signs, deciphering the intricate chronology that has been foretold. We've witnessed the intensification of these signs, a crescendo of events that seem to herald the approach of something monumental. And then we've explored the final signs, those last few pieces of the puzzle that are said to fall into place just before the climactic finale of our earthly saga. Yet, the answer to our question remains elusive. Are we truly living in the prophesied days? Or are these signs just coincidental blips on the radar of our existence? Whether we are living in the end times or not, these signs serve as a reminder to us all to strive for righteousness and compassion in our lives, 